Welcome to day two of boot camp. How's it going? You guys doing your homework? I know you are, a lot of you, because I'm reading it. It's excellent. But everybody doing it? Awesome. I am. I am doing my homework. I even did my breathing exercises because I, um, I brought my uh, car that's under a lease because there was some grinding and they said, oh, you need new brakes. And I said, yeah, but that's covered, right? Nope. nope. So I did some breathing exercises, no problem. You know? <laughs> so anyway, without, um, without um, taking up too much time, we're going to get going. Linda Okineski. All righty, let's uh, ready to start boot camp. I need two volunteers before you volunteer. I am looking for someone who considers themselves fairly agile. Um, if you're into the martial arts or anything physical, you're way overqualified. I don't want you involved. Um, but somebody who feels like they've got decent core strength uh, and is willing to come up and play with my basketball for a second. I need two people. Oh, come on up. Uh, and, and Amy, that'd be great. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give the ball to you. All right. So I, I need you. going to get 10 seconds. Anybody got a 10 second clock going? Can someone get me a 10 second clock going fast? Uh, oh, come up here over here. I want you to kind of stay between the screens. Um, you can't leave the area between the screens, all right? You have 10 seconds, Amy, to get the ball away from her. Ready? Go. <laughs> Are we Am I traveling? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so polite. Nine. Time. All right. I'm going to give you a chance to do the other way. Which other way? Ready? Oh, God. All right. Are you ready? Oh, wait, you Re didn't start yet. You're cheating. Ready? <laughs> Go. Whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ten seconds. Time. Time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That was awesome. Wasn't that wonderful? All right. Can you stay for a quick second? I'm going to try it. Oh, no. I'm going to try it, all right? I'm just telling you. Ready? Tell me time. Go. Amy, yes. can I have the ball? <laughs> all right. There is a reason I did that. Several things go on here. We all knew what the objective was, right? And you guys are all clear on your objective, but sometimes you don't think of the fastest, easiest way to do something. Right? But I totally set them up for failure. Kim and Amy were doomed. I had primed the pump. I had primed it to be a physical fight. Didn't I? I nobody who can do judo, right? I'd made it a very physical endeavor. That's all they heard. So I, this almost always goes this way. They didn't think about the easy way. I had set them up to be physical and to make this a brawl. And sometimes real estate's like that too, between agents and everyone else. We set it up to be a brawl. So today I want to tell you is the most boring boot camp, except for our awesome speaker, Katie Clancy. But I'm going to be boring today. But I think it's the most important boot camp. You're going to say, Linda, I know that, I know that. I know you know it, but you're not doing it. You're not thinking like it. So I want to go over these things, and I want you to take them to heart, because I think this is the real difference between successful people and people who aren't as successful. But we're going to start with the homework, because this is the fun part. I love reading it. By the way, sometimes I dictate and things don't come out right. I once told Lisa Figueredo to kill her daughter. I didn't mean that. I actually wanted her to tell her daughter, but that's the way it came out. So um, you can have a little grace. It's a private Facebook group. Be yourself. Um, 
This was my favorite of all the things I've seen so far. It's from Aldo. I'm going to meet with Patty Baker Nardone tomorrow as part of a campaign I've kicked off where I'm taking time to sit and really talk to people and get to know them better in 2020. Not just trading ideas, but really knowing a person. That's my goal this year. Isn't that nice? You go, Aldo. Isn't that nice? You're great. So, there were so many excuses for meditating. <laughs> I just cracked me up. Ready? I'm a deep thinker, sometimes a bit asset minded. I like, to, I like to think that covers it. All right. No, it doesn't cover it. Meditating is an intentional act that you actually have to do. I'm not asking like for really sophisticated stuff. You know, I can't remember what Tim's wise ass kind of thing was, but <laughs> all right. Um, Stacy Murray, the last thing. I am looking forward to seeing the difference in my life with the changes I am making today. In 2020, I am making a concerted effort to improve my health nutritionally as well as physically. I have also made the decision to be more organized to divide my time between church, church responsibilities, work, and home life. Nice. Denise McCarthy. I wrote a text to my client that recently closed telling them that I miss texting them every day as they are great people. Why I like this is because we drop our clients like hot potatoes the minute that deal closes and we get our check. Right? That's just what happens. The fact that Denise decided to reach out to somebody after the closing with this, but my favorite part is she shared what they texted back. Here it is. My client that I texted replied, I know we're your favorites, but you must be strong. Move forward and buy and sell. <laughs> then she said, let's meet for dinners and drink. Is that an amazing referral client? Because Denise built this amazing relationship. Look, at, she's rooting for her. you. You sell to other people now. When you get people who are selfless like that, that's amazing. Okay, Tim, I love your homework. It is maybe some of my favorite homework. So he writes, uh, hey, I never said thank you for getting our asses back safe from the Christmas party, so thank you, you're the best. And he gets back, laugh out loud, hey, asshole, have no one else to thank today, so you chose me? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to guess <laughs> that Tim is not regularly thanking people <laughs> and then when they get a thank you text. Uh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you've really thrown me for a you thrown me for a loop, Carrie, because I was thinking, start with the people who love you, Tim. <laughs> Maybe that's the way to go. <laughs> but guys, one of the things that some of you started to see, and the reason you, know, you get those chemicals flooding your brain is, when you write, people write back. And guess what? You're not just thanking them. They're going to say nice things about you, unless you're Carrie. So <laughs> Okay, I liked what Jen put up here. Um, let's see. Uh, did not exercise today, but signed up for yoga tomorrow at 5.30. What, what I liked about it was nothing like paying for a class ahead of time to get you accountable about getting there. Having an exercise buddy gets you there. Bravo to Lynn, Julie, and Lauren, who met at 9 o'clock today and then walked. I don't know where you went. But they walked before boot camp. I'm going to guess that you plan then to do that again. They would, they would take company. What a great way to come up here early and get a good walk in. There will be people here. Um, having a buddy do it. I know I get out of bed because Mary's expecting me. Am I doing something wrong? I'm going to take your necklace off. Uh, sorry about that. But it's ruining the mic, so heck with that. All right. I loved Greg Gale Winters here, says, uh, two minutes of breathing before I talk to a crazy client. <laughs> I just want to say this is an excellent method of dealing with crazy. I know she was joking about it. No, I wasn't. No. No, I, wasn't. <laughs> I really need it. But I thought, that's something we can all learn from. Heidi Russo. I don't watch TV or even know how to turn it on. 
But that was the only thing I loved about that was um, I sent a text to my 17-year-old thanking her for cleaning the house spotless. I went, what 17-year-old does that, right? So there were a couple of great things there. Did she have a party? <laughs> <laughs> Did she have a party? That, that could be it. All right, always thinking. Um, what Robin Gunderson said is, zero crap TV screen time. Reading myself sleep tonight. I saw people saying, I can't do a TV challenge, Linda, because that's what puts me to sleep. I have to watch TV. Listen to a podcast. There are alternatives. Just saying. Um, going TV less, a little scary. That woman lives alone with her three dogs. She said, my dogs love to watch TV. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm not. So this was interesting. But it can be life-changing. Don't try to do everything I say, but these, these things should become habits, not just something you have to willpower through, because then it won't last. Bill Butler, will door knock expired listings? Now, I, you saw on a lot of these, I said, let's be specific. But in Bill's case, like, who are you going to door knock? He's just going to keep going until he gets an appointment. That's awesome. By the way, we all do so many things passively. I'm going to write letters to all the expireds, and they're going to ignore all your letters. He's going to go out and see them. That's getting out there and making it happen. Alberto, one hour of weights with Michael George. You know, their real estate team is going out together. I think that's great, and doing their weights. Uh, Lauren O'Brien, meditation. I actually stopped watching TV before bed last year during boot camp and listened to a meditation tape before bed instead. Uh, tape is one hour and two minutes long. Very seldom do I hear the whole tape. I do notice my sleep is better as well. Nice to know. All right, so the following is taken from Brene Brown. Do you know Dare to Lead? She's written some great books. But she's got this phrase. Now, that she borrowed from some ancient philosopher, but she's taken it up a notch. And I want to talk about a strong back. Those who are hugely successful are strong. I love that Rose picked Malala. I mean, talk about bravery. You know, I'm going to school, even though people are going to kill me. It's important for women to be educated. Soft front. I know I tend to want to be strong back, strong front, right? But if you want to get something done and accomplished, you're going to do it with kindness. You're going to do it with priming the pump with people. That's what's going to make all the difference. And then, so I'd say that strong back, um, strong back, soft front is tough and tender, grit and grace. What Brene added to this was wild heart love this strong back soft front wild heart excited and scared are you ready to take the challenges get out of your comfort zone and yes it is scary acknowledge it <clears throat> successful people don't for a second just because they put on a front don't think that they're not scared about doing something new doing something different. If they're not scared, they are crazy. Only crazy people are not scared when they should be. It. Ever heard of the It Girl? Right? It was a kind of a thing in the 60s and 70s. I want to talk about It. This entire class is about It. That comes to mind when someone says he or she has It. What are they talking about? Sharon, pardon? Have it all together. Have it all, they have it all together. What else? It. Self-confidence. Self -confidence. They just beam self-confidence. What else? Spunk. Spunk. Yep. They got mojo. Ethan. They have potential. You just feel it in them, don't you? What else is it about it? It is tangible. It's an amalgamation of everything. It's totally intangible. But so give me some of those characteristics of the it person. Making it happen. No one's kind of touched on what I'm looking for. Confident. I think the it person has, did someone say charisma? Yes. yes. Charisma. 
it looks effortless, doesn't it? It's never effortless. Uh, I wrote that it. I'm not going to assign values to them yet, but I'm going to say they have a presence, right? They absolutely have a presence. So I was kind of on the impression that most people were just kind of born with it. They had it or they didn't. Every study I have shown is that you can develop it. You absolutely positively can. And so I'm going to show you how and people that you know who have developed it. These people play like champions. Do you all want to play like a champion today? Yeah. All right. Okay, this apparently is not the slide I thought I was going to. Sorry about that. So we're going to go to that. Uh, be a leader. This boot camp and this class in today in particular is about leadership. The it people have people who follow them, right? When you have it, people want to be like you, they want to do what you're doing, and they're willing to follow a good leader. But the one thing people in business have that have it, that have true leadership, is they make everybody around them better. They raise the boat for everybody. And now I'm not just talking about your team. So as a team leader, it is absolutely your responsibility. And some people don't get it. I have team leaders that are like, I'm building a team because they're going to make me money. I see that all the time. But the team leaders who build teams because they want to make those team members better. They want to help those team members grow. They want those team members to explode. Those are the people we love. Like people. You. <laughs> we all want to be lifted up. We all want to be recognized. We all want to be brought better and be better selves. That's what boot camp's about. But it's not me, Kathy. It's everybody in here that's participating in boot camp. It's everybody that's cheering someone on. But we're going to talk about the hard stuff in a little bit. The hard stuff about growing a team and making it better. Martin Luther King, people followed him because he had a purpose. People knew unequivocally what he wanted. He had a dream, right? He believed. People love to follow people who, follow people who are on a mission. But think about your mission might be, we're going to get through this, this listing. We're going to get through this deal. You know, this team is going to succeed this way, and we're going to achieve this together. That's what this is about. I was shocked to find out that Steve Martin, Lady Gaga, Amy Schumer, and Brad Pitt identify as introverts. Would you have picked Amy Schumer for an introvert for one second? Never. No way. Completely. She completely shuts down. She doesn't like to be around a lot of people. But she turns it on. Turns it on. She brings out her it. All right. I want you to take a leap of faith here. I'm going to suggest right now that people who have it have an uncanny way of acting all day long. And I don't mean acting in a bad way. If you look at the roots of acting, action, it just means to do. It's what they're actually doing all day long. They're acting. So let's look at the attributes of really successful actors. And let's differentiate right away between good and bad actors. Bad actors are unemployed, all right? But if you look up the definition of acting, I want to tell you right now, it's the 15th definition is pretending or feigning. All the definitions of acting are doing and being. So, can you, so I don't want you to think I'm trying to make you into people that you aren't. I'm trying to have you live up to your potential and act it out every day. Has that, have I made that point clear? OK, because I don't want you to think, uh, because I, it's interesting. So one of the first times I the big hotel, I dragged my three kids. They were in high school at the time. 
to come and see what mom does. And when I got home, my daughter was like, I don't even know who that lady was. <laughs> you know, who was she? I said, well, that's how I am all day long, but apparently I'm not that way at home. <laughs> all right? That was very, I, I heard her. All right, actors have great memory. They have to memorize all those lines. All right, and let's talk about little things, and let's talk on the first thing we're going to get good at in terms of memory. Names. I know you're bad at names. The more you tell yourself you're bad at, the na at memorizing names, the more you're going to be bad at memorizing names. So today, I greeted every single person I could, except for Cindy. I forgot her name temporarily, but then I went and found out who it was by name. Two people greeted me by name. Megan, use my name, and oh, and it was um, Trump. Only two of you. Now, no big deal. I know you know me, but I'm going to tell you when you meet people on the street. You're at a party. And if you use their name, they are honored. Has anyone bothered to learn the names of the women as you come out front? That's Rose and Bianca. You might want to write these down. These are lovely people who are trying to learn all your names. And Becca, is Becca's out there too? Becca. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> the sweetest sound to anyone's ears is the sound of their own name. All right? So there are ways that you can get better at learning names. Say, for instance, I was just being introduced to Annette. I might say, hi, Annette, I'm Linda. You know, we have a little chit chat, and I'm going, Annette, I didn't know that about you. I've now said it twice. And when I leave an exit, and I really enjoy getting to know you. If you could say it three times, it's going to stick in your brain. We all need to get better at that. How about that awkward conversation where like, you're supposed to know that person, but you don't know them. And now it's too late to ask their name, right? That's, right? Is, that happens to me all the time, and then I apologize, and I ask their name, and nine times out of ten, they forgot my name. Too. That's right. So that was my third thing. You're one ahead of me, Jen. I'm sorry. Okay, but that is what Jen, because you're not on mic, is that, you know, just apologize and say, I've forgotten your name. They forgot yours too, and you can, you can straighten it all out. But now I have taught my husband to be an accomplice, right? <laughs> this is, so he knows the thing. So I always say, Annette, um, I'm, I'd love for you to meet my husband. And I do not say, no, I don't say Annette, sorry. I don't know her name. So I'm going to go up to her and say, oh, I'd love for you to meet my husband. And I do not say David, because that way David would say, hi, I'm David, and which, then Annette says, hi, I'm Annette. Do you see how that works? Saves my ass all the time, all right? So uh, those are things. So I'm just saying that those are little things. But when you remember people's children's names, their pets' names, this, they say that when you, those are things that build trust more than the things like, you have to sweep in and save them from a fire to build trust. But the second thing they said, besides remembering their names and people around them, is going to funerals. Do you know what Kathy said to me today when I hugged her? She just lost her mom. Do you know who came? Monica came. Eileen came. She gave me the list of all the people from our office that came. She remembered. I'm just telling you, she likes those people better than me. I didn't make it. <laughs> just kidding. But nonetheless, the memory, really important. They're intelligent. They work on it. Happier people are often just more intelligent because they take it in. Do you know your peripheral vision is better when you're happier? You're going to soak it. You're going to see more. Emerge, come the role, like acting. You can be it. You can make a conscious decision. I had an agent several years ago I was trying to help. She's no longer with the company. You're going to shortly understand why. So. You know, she was kind of like that real low emotional resilience. Things, when things went wrong, they went very, very wrong fast. Uh, she was the person that couldn't walk into any room without finding something to complain about. You know, just things, there was a lot of negative energy. Eeyore, yeah. No, she wasn't so much Eeyore, just like 
judgmental. Judgmental, super, super judgmental about everything. And I was like, you know, they're not getting upset. You're just making yourself more upset, you know? You could think of this differently. Linda, you're trying to change me. I just want to be myself. So apparently she has chosen to be like that. Those are choices. Are you believable and authentic? No one likes somebody who's slick. They're not looking for the fast hands, Eddie. And that's when you're a little bit vulnerable, when you can admit your mistakes. By the way, don't do this. Ladies, we are notorious for being apologetic. I'm sorry I'm late and I don't have my phone and all these things. My mother used to say, Linda, we've got to be more like men. They walk in and they don't apologize. They just do their job. So there's a, there's a little humility in between, right? But don't apologize for things you don't need to apologize for. But you can be vulnerable about things that people can relate to. There's a difference. Can you connect with your audience? That's what actors do. They connect. These things are super important. There are people who are so in love with their listing presentation that they don't realize they're putting people to sleep, right? You've got to pick up the cadence if it needs to be snappier. You need to fold the computer down if that's what needs to happen. You need to be able to connect with your audience. Don't be so set on your objective that you're going to fight your way through it instead of actually making it work. They have huge confidence and courage. We're going to talk a lot about courage in a little bit, so I'm going to save that. Their body language how they carry themselves, how they stand up straight. Do they make eye contact? By the way, you can do everything too much. Eye contact is great. I can be looking at Dell now. I spent the rest of the boot camp guessing at Dell, <laughs> right? That would not go well. So, you know, everything in moderation, everything in moderation. They're brilliant listeners, brilliant listeners. And we are a group of agents, and part of our success is that we talk so much. And actually, we talk too much. We're talking about that Friday. Focus and concentrate in the moment. Be in the zone. And what I mean that is that if you ever show up at a listing point and your phone is on the table, I can tell you right now you've completely devalued your clients. For some reason, it, something, you know, whatever Rose wants to get to is more important than me right now. It's my camera. It's okay. This is for your camera. I get. But just beware of these things. My husband and I love to go to restaurants and watch all the couples not talking to each other. Right? That's what happens. Like, can you believe it? Micro messaging. You are sending out messages whether you realize it or not. You're sending out messages when you use my name and when you don't use my name. When you wear a lot of hair product or you've got your nails six inches long. You are sending out messages with every single, how you carry yourself, how you dress. You've got body art all over, it's a message. Everything you do is a message, whether you want it to be or not. Be aware that you're sending those messages out. Your vocal skills. A lot of people are kind of monotone, especially on a listening presentation. They just start and they just keep going. You're going to be listened to more if you pause. Did you, did you feel that? Miles Davis says the music is in between the notes. Those pauses. Also modulating your voice. I got excited today. We bring it down. You're just much more interesting that way. You can be more interesting with the way and using your voice that way. Super important. And of course, presence, that charisma, and that's it. And this is how you build it. So we talked about objective. I don't want you to ever go to any appointment without knowing what your objective is. You know, it might just simply be I'm trying to build a relationship. It doesn't have to be yeah, getting, get the contract signed. I know a lot of you like one-step contracts. Let's just go in and get the contract. I feel like, yeah, you got the contract, but you know, it seems like that's what that was all about. 
If you're building the relationship, you're going to get the contract. Don't make that the objective. I was floored. This has been out for years, and I just noticed it because I've been on Facebook for this group. Uh, this little commercial for a product. Ready? It's the new year. The new you. Be upright. Be confident. Be energized. Be great. Be yourself. What is this thing? This thing you put on your back gives you a little buzz if you're not sitting up straight. <laughs> thing is, how about that? Right? But how did they sell it? <laughs> Having a, and being confident. But because body posture really is everything. What did you think about that cello player when all of a sudden he went back? Yeah. I thought that was a great visual. He was just a guy playing the cello, and then he became a presence, didn't he? Okay, here, back to my daughter. <laughs> now she's got both arms up. But I just want to remind you that your body posture doesn't just send signals to everyone around you, but it is flooding your own brain with the oxytocin and the dopamine and the serotonin that actually makes you feel more confident. The show must go on. Here's my actor analogy. There isn't a person in this room who if they're not personally suffering, suffering something crappy, someone they love is. Sure, you can escape it for a while. Sometimes things are all glorious. But everybody here has got a boatload of problems. I have a really good friend once who said during my eighth grade CCD class, they put us on opposite side of the walls. And they said, I want you to think about your problems. I'm just going to tell you right now, look at the other side. If you knew what other people were going through, <laughs> you wouldn't want to trade. And that's why we need to give a little bit more grace and be a little bit more tender. When someone cuts you off, you don't flip them the bird. You're thinking, that could be somebody's nana. Right? Give it a little, give it a little grace. My friend, Catherine Clark. Talk about somebody who sounds compelling. You know, I helped her run for school committee. Now she's the sixth ranking Democrat. Talk about how she sounds. When she speaks, there's never an um, like, you know, well, she puts it out to the universe. And, she, and when she's not talking, she's smiling. It took her a long way. Now, she's amazing. She's brilliant. I'm totally biased. But when I watch her, I'm not surprised where she's gone. And she had a dream. She, when I first met her, I, this is how I met her, I sold her her house. This was a client, all right? But she was such a fun client, I invited her to dinner, because like, I'm going to hang out with you. You are fun. You are meeting awesome people all the time. How do le leaders carry themselves? Think about being imprisoned and how much grace Nelson Mandela maintained throughout that whole process. He could have been a whining, complaining, bitchy, awful person. And yet, because he rose above his circumstances, he had this amazing, powerful presence and accomplished so much. Leaders can accomplish things. How does communication, uh, how does the communication you do every day affect the people who receive it? I'm just asking you. I want you to really dwell on that. What if everyone you come in contact with was better for having spent time with you? Everyone. When you talk to the barista, he's glad Nina came in today. I know that when I go to 
a desk clerk at a hotel. I don't always get upgraded, but I often get upgraded. Do you know why? And I'm not slipping them 20 bucks, although that can work. <laughs> I'm just plain old nice. And you know what I hear all the time? You're so nice. You know what my answer is? I deal with the general public. I don't want to be like them. <laughs> That's what I say. Right? And I've just decided this is the way I want to be. Listening judo. Beware, you extroverted, highly uh, emotional people who love to talk because while that is getting you clients because you are not afraid to talk to anybody and you're great at open houses, you often are so busy thinking about what you need to say next that you're not hearing what's going on. You are missing the opportunities. People are telling you how to help them and you don't hear it because you're so convinced that you have to have this physical plan to remove the ball from someone's hands that you're not doing it the easy way. Refer out loud to past comments. Anybody ever gone out on a Saturday night and somebody says something and then there's always someone in the group that can re reference back to whatever that comment was and then it becomes a joke for the night, right? Steve Chuha is great at leadership meetings. We have the most boring finance meetings, but he can find a way to pick something we were talking about earlier and say it later. He's engaging. He's so likable that way. But it's not just because he does that or he's funny. It's because the person who he's referring to feels so honored that you listened and that it was important enough to bring up again. Or even if it wasn't important, that it was funny enough. Or that you were just plain listening. That's so important. All right, take notes. Look at Diane on her iPad. I love Diane. She's really painted. Look at all the notes Rose has. So impressed. Look, about, look at Jeff's new in the business, and he's just writing up a storm next to Diane. I just want to let you know, if you're writing notes, I like you better. <laughs> no, look at Colleen. Colleen's got notes. So when you're on a listing appointment and you're taking notes, that's the micro-messaging that you're paying attention they never say, thank you for taking notes, but that stuff is being picked up. You know, if Carrie's taking great, great notes, then that seller's going, she cares. Ah, that was important. I really appreciate she's paying attention. Just beware that that's the micro-messaging that means so much. And then I want to give you permission to have humor and find fun, even during the crazy times. Right? I lost my dad in October. We laughed so hard at his expense, you know? So my dad had a thing where he kept saying, I just want you to all know, he had five kids. Um, I'm spending it all. You, you know, you're going to take a collection up to bury me. So he died very thankfully like that. He watched the Patriots game. My son talked to him. He said, I don't feel well. I went to bed and died. Boom, like that. He wasn't sick. I was so lucky. Right? And that's how I looked at it. I wasn't like, oh, I lost my damn going. I had him for 84 years. Two of my three kids were in their 30s and had two grandparents. Like, how lucky am I? It got me through the grief a lot better. But here's, so I get on a plane that night, that next one, six o'clock, he dies at uh, nine o'clock at night. And so we go to the funeral home. And the guy at the funeral home says, now we're going to ship your dad's body back to Boston. And um, would you like to um, pay now, or, or we can send them collect? And I started <laughs> laughing. I thought, oh my god, my dad would love to be sent collect. But I said, no, we'll pay you now. He's going, what's going on? This but you can find humor at like your most down moments. Positive energy. I'm going to ask you right now, when you go to work out, you know, sometimes you just drag yourself out for a walk. When do you have the most energy? Before you work out or afterwards? It's universal. Why is that? 
you get lots of, for first of all, there's physical reasons. The blood's flowing, you got oxygen in, you know, all that dopamine's coming in. I had a friend, Catherine's son, um, joined the track team and he went out for the first week and he said, I don't know, I heard the dopamine was supposed to start kicking in. It's not kicking in with me and he quit. But anyway, uh, <laughs> those things can happen. But the reason is energy begets energy. All of you have to-do lists. You just gotta start on them. They say writers, when they write a block, and you could sit around, I know this happens to me actually, the presentation, I know my mind's going and I just can't get going, I can't get started. But the minute I get into it, I can't stop. So it's just about taking the energy to start. And that positive energy is contagious. Just like at the airport, the people looking at their watch, you know, we are all wirelessly connected. It just makes for good leadership when you have good energy. So, when do you get to relax? Should, should, should you keep that energy up when you uh, walk into the gym? Should you still be on? Should you be on when you go into the office just to make a couple of coffees? coffees? You should be. All right. So, when you come home, should you still be on? Are you going to bring the depressed, low energy self home? for your loved ones? I don't think that's the way to go. If you're going to think about it, if you really want to live this life, you live it all the time, you can relax when you go to bed. Or go and take a, if you don't have the energy, go do some yoga, go do some meditation, take a nap. But you should be on all the time. Diet, exercise, and looking good. All I want to say is willpower will get you there. Willpower never lasts, it depletes. It's like a battery. The only thing that's gonna get you to where you wanna go is just forming new habits. We're gonna talk a little bit about that later. But you gotta so put everything in your environment that reduces temptation and makes it desirable. On the way in, I was listening to a podcast and it was, there's a bullet center out in Seattle where the CEO does not have beautiful views overlooking the lake. No, they built the staircase on the beautiful side of the building and it's a beautiful um, uh, Douglas fir staircase with beautiful landings, with beautiful views, it's six stories. They hid the elevator in this building. They're like, where's the elevator? Well, you have to kind of go down a, a little hallway and go through a door, it looks like a closet. To encourage everybody to take the stairs. I'm using this analogy because that's actually how habits change. People now go into that building and they're actually, they're meeting people on the stairwell, they're having conversations on these beautiful landings, you know, some need a little rest because they can't go the sixth floor, but they've integrated those steps into their day and now it's just normal. If you look at any books about habits, it's not about willpower and power through and I'm strong and I have the best intentions to change myself. It never lasts. The only thing that lasts is creating different habits and you do that successfully by changing your whole environment. Okay, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Eye contact. I already did eye contact with Zell as much as I would love to stare at you all day long. Try, remember that it's important, but if you're sitting in front of four people because it's an estate on a listing presentation, and there's somebody looking at you like they want to execute you, we tend to ignore them. <laughs> it's not a good feeling. That might be the person that's paying the most attention to you. They just have that resting bitch face. You know, that's, that's what's going on, right? We might want to look at the real smiley one. I'm just meeting Paige now. Paige, so nice to meet you. You are a really smiley one. I might want to look at her because she's just delightful. She's just given me lots of great feedback. She's always like Okay, she is, but her mind's in some of the places. I know it's already, because she's that high extrovert. She's thinking about all kinds of things, right? So she's really probably not even listening to me, but I think she is, because she's smiling at me. Okay, preparation and spontaneity. You, have, you can be much more creative at your presentations in your entire life if you are prepared. And I love what Katie Clancy 
and talk about getting you prepared when she comes up today. It frees you. When you go into a listing presentation and you know every single comp, you know all the square footage prices, you know the absorption rates, you know the months of inventory, you know everything you need to know. It might not even really come up, but it brings you a lot of confidence because you went in the right way and it allows you to be spontaneous. Nothing worse than these listing agents who think they're going to go, I, I got this covered. You know, I can do this. That comes off. You can smell it. They're faking it. They don't know how sick it's are. They didn't prepare. Think about preparing. Are you guys ready to raise the stakes? Yeah. I'm raising the stakes now because we're going to talk about the hard part now. Okay, great book by Scott Adams who did Dilbert. Loser think. I just want to do some quotes here and then we're going to get to down and dirty. All right? So, Scott Adams. If you're certain you know the inner thoughts of another person, that's a sign you might have too much confidence in your opinion. I say that because this is a very common scenario for Paul, Eileen, Steve, and I. An agent calls, and they are just rip shit about another agent. And they've done this, and they've done this, and you know what they really did? And they are evil, and this is what's going on. And I, we get this way too much. And I am so glad we're introducing loser think because the next time I hear that, I'm going to go, loser think, all right? <laughs> because then we call the other agent, and this is very common, and what we realize is the other agent is just oblivious, lazy. There was no evil intention. You know, they didn't know better. You know, we got to give a little grace. So don't be a little overconfident in your opinion. The world is not a fair place, and there is a chance the people you are dealing with did not get to where they are because of their intelligence, hard work, or character. They're good at getting the it thing done. Just remember that. So followed by, when I need to dial up my ego, I remind myself that the people I am about to deal with are a lot like me in the sense that they, are, they too are only pretending to be confident and capable. The sweet spot for self-confidence involves operating with the belief that you can do more than available evidence suggests, but not so much more that it would be crazy. You wouldn't start in real estate. Take your first listing. Go out with a buyer. You don't know what you're doing, but you got to have that confidence to go out and do something different. If you're in that complacency, like I keep doing it the same way, are you ready to change it up and do it a little bit differently? Or are you the person that thinks, Ah, you know what, I know a developer, I would love you to start an on-sale sales division and I can take care of it when you've never done that before. That's crazy, right? That, that's crazy. You're not, you might get through it, but you're not doing the right thing by the client. That's a whole different level of real estate business. We're all putting on an act and hoping the audience buys it. Don't hesitate to face humility when the situation calls for it, but don't overdo it. Sometimes you need to dial it back and say, you know what, I might not be right, this is what I'm thinking, even when you really think you are right. Because it is not worth winning the battle to lose the war, as they say. That means your ego jail. Don't let yourself get into ego jail. Effectiveness is more important than ego. The best solution is often unrelated to who is at fault it is loser thing to believe otherwise. Here's a common scenario. I get agents who are just so upset because we don't pay unless we have compliance paperwork. They get right down to the closing. They're the listing agent and go, the buyer agent never gave me back the lead paint form. And now I can't get it. I've emailed, I've texted, I've called, I've done, I can't get it. And I just want to let you know, if you want to complain, call Eileen. She's so much nicer because you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, did you release the offer without the lead paint form? That's your own damn fault. It's not the other agent's fault. <laughs> now, there is a time when you're the buyer's agent and the listing agent is so lazy they don't even have a lead paint form. And now you know you're going to real estate jail. So call Steve, Eileen, Paul, or I, and we will start to build the case for when you go to court and you're in real estate jail that you did everything you could. All right, that's all I can do for you. All right? But really be careful 
that sometimes uh, the other thing that I that happens to us is people call with this big problem. They want to tell me this whole story of how we got here and how bad the other agent was on the other side. I hear it all the time. I'm going, but really, I'm just telling you, I'm a driver. I don't want to like. If you're gonna tell me the time, don't build me the clock. You're like, I'm not, you know, just don't do that. Come right to like, what's the problem? <laughs> what's the problem? Just a sex says Siri. That was pretty good. Okay. If you're coming to me, I'm gonna say, what's the problem and how can we fix it? Even if it wasn't, we did. Siri is listening to me. That is so funny. Trying to help. All right. But do know that the person who caused the problem might not be able to solve it. You might have to solve it. How many times as real estate agents have we had to step in from the other side because we're not going to get it done? We're just going to have to get it done. All right, so if you're going to be a real leader, you're going to have to lead clients. You're going to have to lead your team. You should be a leader for everyone in your office. You should be a leader for your family, your nonprofit organizations everything. You need to think of yourself as a true leader. And if true leaders are the people who want to grow everyone around them, they can only do that if they start to confront some of the hard truth, the flaws, the negatives, right? So I'm going to start with, I want you this to be a mantra. I accelerate curiosity and minimize judgment. I just want to know more about the situation. I'm going to refrain from judging on the situation right now. Because that'll take you in whole different places of leadership. Right? If you're thinking about, I'm going to accelerate the cure, I'm going to find out more about this instead of judging. Let's talk about high functioning teams. And although a lot of you are real estate team leaders, I'm talking about teams everywhere, just like I just said, at your church, um, at your temple, at, um, in your family. You want to be a high-functioning team. Sure, there are team leaders who are trying to build their teams. I'm going to tell you, it's very, the, the difference between dysfunctional, functional, and highly functional teams. And it's like one thing. Most teams are just a people kind of doing all their own thing, right? Most offices are like that. I am on a mission this year to make Leading Edge a high-functioning team. That means the whole organization. And I do that by bringing people up, and I do that by helping them grow, and I do that by confronting the hard stuff. Everyone in this room think about their most trusted friend or colleague. Someone comes to mind, your bestie. Something's wrong. Do you want, with you, do you want them to tell you what you want to hear or do you want them to tell you the truth? You do. But why do you let them do it? Because you like them and trust them. You've built that relationship. You are able to do that. But it's hard. Most teams work hard avoiding talking about the real issues. This is it. This is the fundamental thing. They're so darn polite. They don't want to deal with what's irritating them, what's wrong, what could be better. They'll hurt someone's feelings. If you really love someone and they need to know something, is that hurting their feelings? So yesterday at the end of boot camp, I'm in Boston and someone comes up and goes, Linda, you have lipstick all over your teeth. I'm like, I've been standing here for two hours and now you're telling me? <laughs> all right? Okay, I'm saying that because they didn't want to interrupt me. They were being polite. Would I really have wanted to know that earlier? Yes. Absolutely. This is a simple thing, right? That's an easy thing to fix. Most of the problems I'm talking about aren't easy to fix. It's the way people are behaving. It's the way people are reacting. It's they're not showing up on time. They're not following up with everything. And you're kind of forgiving that you're letting it go. You know stuff's going on. But your team cannot be a highly functioning team if you're not dealing 
with the issues. And every team has issues. The, issue, the teams that function the highest are the ones that deal with the problem. Straight out. And they do it out of love. They do it out of making people better. So the root for confrontation, which sounds like antagonistic, right? It's got a bad rap. When you look at what the word really means, confrontation means seeking the truth. Very simple. Just seeking the truth. Never assume your truth is the truth. Especially when you go into a conversation. If I went up to Jen right now, and I know I'm right, right? Because I do know I'm right. What does that mean? It means she's, she's wrong. And you, we've all heard the truth is somewhere, right? I, oh my goodness, everyone's so excited to hear Siri today. So high-functioning teams get to the truth, discuss the hard issues. And the way they do that is they deal with it. Now, I'm going to talk about, this is a Harvard Business School, you know, kind of term. It's called pairing. Pairing is the most infectious poison in your family, in your team, in your office, everywhere. Pairing. But I get a much better word, that, uh, phrase that you know what it is. It's talking behind people's back. And what are we going to do about it? When you talk behind someone's back, first of all, you know, I might have a lot to complain about right now. If I say to you, my husband got in late yesterday. He was responsible for picking up dinner and didn't get done. And I, I might be having a good time telling you all this, Laura. Is it helping the situation at all? No. Nope. I'm bonding with you, right? I love to bond this way. Who do I need to tell this to? I need to talk to David. Right? But we love that. We go out for drinks and we love to talk about other people and what's going on. We can't help ourselves. It's toxic. It's poison. It's not helping. If you need to rant, if you just need some relief, talk to your dog. <laughs> you know, you can do that to your dog. But that's the only people who should hear it. If you're in a high function team, if you're at leading edge and you've got a problem with somebody, talking to anyone else but the person who has the problem is not going to help it. Now, if it's a delicate issue, maybe it's something big. It could be drugs, alcohol. Uh, you're worried that someone might be suicidal. Maybe you're not, we'll get a team. Come to us. We'll help you. That person still needs to be approached, but maybe you need help getting there. But think about running your whole life now with the premises, I'm not going to talk behind anybody's back. The team level, you, that's how you're going to solve the problems. Things will get better. It is the single thing that keeps teams from the top. It seems so simple, and yet it's so hard. Disappointment on any team is the gap between the expectations and reality. It's why all your clients are upset. They thought you'd call them every day. And you will think that unless you tell them you're not going to. Set the expectations. I set the expectations today because I know that a lot of you came to boot camp because you can't wait to get the real estate stuff, right? You want the magic at the listing table. You want the magic with working with buyers. You want the objection handling. We're getting to that. But I'm telling you, this is the stuff that makes all the difference your entire real estate career. Now let's take it to a new level. And this is my new idea. Mary, this, I didn't do this. Uh, wrote of this. I said, I need a picture of an uh, agent with some sellers. And this is what she came up with. What if from now on, in addition to everything else, we do at a listing appointment? We don't just say, hey, we're going to be a group of people. We're going to work together and get through this. What if you start to actually propose right at the first listing appointment going, you know what? You know how this works best? We all need to be a high-functioning team. That means we need to be able to give each other permission to do the hard stuff. 
we need to be able to give permission to make sure that we can deal with issues at hand. I'm going to be able to tell you what I need from you, and you need to be able to tell me what you need from me. I think this is going to be the next new thing when you're with clients. If they can get this, if you can explain that you want to be a high-functioning team, things will go so much better. Are you willing to deal with the hard stuff? By the way, that's the whole problem with listings. People don't want to deal with unrealistic sellers and the price. People don't want to deal with people like, I guess I could live with that wallpaper. It's killing the sale. Because you won't tell them to take it down. You won't tell them to stage it. You won't tell them to create the product for market. You don't want to hurt their feelings. Is this all coming together now? All right. So with that, I'm inviting Christine George to come up. Um, Christine's gonna has a little something for us, and uh, we'll discuss our yoga class. Welcome, Christine. And then you pick up the mic as if you've never seen it before. <laughs> and you go, I don't know how to turn it on. But when I was sitting back there, I knew how to turn it on. Um, OK. So I'm going to just dovetail into everything that we've been talking about the last couple of days. Um, I love everything that you presented this morning. And I am a true believer that what Linda said, that all of this stuff is going to be the difference between being successful and being average because I believe that when you truly connect with people and they believe that you care about them genuinely they will choose you over anybody so um, okay briefly five minutes for those of you who know me and for those of you who I don't know you know that I believe that balance is critical it's a critical component to living a healthy life I believe it's actually probably one of the most critical pieces of living a healthy life and having the kind of life that you desire and that you deserve. But there's a ton of things that throw us off, right? So one of the things that throws us off is, bless you, when you compare yourself to others. How many of us see what other agents are doing out there and we say, oh shit, I got to do that. Somebody had a really successful buyer seminar and got three deals out of it. I need to start doing that except that I'm an introvert and I don't want to get in front of people and speak. When you compare yourself to others, it just doesn't work. It throws you totally off balance. Worrying about what other people think, that is detrimental to our health. When you worry about what other people think, you're not worrying about what you think. Um, always trying to please everyone. So many of us are in, you know, you're in the service business most of us as women, that's what we naturally do is serve people. We serve our friends, we serve our families, and then we end up trying to please everybody all the time. And what does that do? That keeps us from doing what authentically we know is right for ourselves. Um, overdoing it. How, did, how many of you, did your mother say, too much of anything is never good? Too much drinking, too much shopping, too much eating, even too much exercise. All of those things, too much of anything is going to cause burnout. Uh, never saying no. How many of you guys are guilty of never saying no, right? Talk about burnout. Never saying no will lead to magic, uh, massive burnout. And then fear, fear of losing, fear of rejection, fear of not being enough, not doing enough. All of those things are what's going to throw you off balance and keep you further, further away from your true self. So here is my challenge for you guys to add to your homework. Your challenge is to do one thing every day that helps bring balance to your life. One thing every day that helps bring balance to your life. So what are some examples of ways to bring balance to your life? Number one, stay focused. As salespeople, when that squirrel goes by, when that notification that you have a Facebook po uh, a message goes on, when your text uh, ding goes off, when your phone rings, all of those things take us away from what we're trying to focus on. 
And if you're anything like me, if you distract me, I will completely forget what I was just doing, right? So stay focused. Um, leave room for error. Now, Linda briefly mentioned this. When you plan properly, when you are prepared, you leave room for error. And when you leave room for error, that means you have the mindset and the time to be able to deal with it. So by and large, there's always going to be something that goes wrong with the deal. Always. Have you ever had a deal where nothing ever happened? It just went super smoothly? Never. But when, you're, when you plan accordingly, when you're prepared, you have room to be able to deal with the issues that come up in a very calm way. Um, flexibility. So being flexible is super important. So when something doesn't go your way or it doesn't go the way that you planned, don't get all caught up in the drama of who's right and wrong, why did that happen? That's energy that's going to completely throw you off balance. Stay focused on finding the solution. Readjust, be flexible. It's okay to be flexible. It feels better when we're flexible, right? And then move forward. Um, number four, so these last are super important, you guys. Um, boundaries, critical, especially in this business, right? So creating boundaries, and that can be anything from, okay, I am not taking a phone call before 8 in the morning, and I am not taking a phone call after 8 at night. Now I understand that there's going to be exceptions. You're working on a deal, and you have to address it at 9 in the morning, right? But if you create those boundaries for yourself, then you're creating space for balance so that you can focus on other priorities in your life. Vacation, birthdays anniversaries. Make a commitment to yourself at the beginning of the year that these days are non-negotiable. These are days I'm going to give to myself or to my family. Saying no. Saying no is super important. So don't fear that you're going to lose something. You're going to lose the listing, whatever it is, if you say no. Say, saying no allows you to say yes to the things that matter. Um, and then finally, do the things you don't want to do. When you do the things you don't want to do, they'll get you to the things that you want. So eat your leafy greens, <laughs> right? Do your yoga, do your steps, your exercise, get enough sleep at night, eat right, make your calls, set up those appointments. All right, that's what I got for you today. Come on. So I do apologize. We did have a couple of people who showed up for yoga this morning. Unfortunately, the room that we had for yoga wasn't available today, so we had to switch the days. So we are going to have yoga at 8.30 on the 15th, the 17th, and the 24th. So that's next Wednesday and Friday, and then Friday of the last day of boot camp. I hope you guys can make it. I'll make it really fun. It's yoga for every body, not just like the super flexible yoga bodies. So I promise it'll create some, some space and some balance and some calm so that you can uh, go about your year, especially that last day, you'll be super prepared to go into your, and your year and have an amazing year. Okay, thanks. thanks. It's gonna be upstairs and uh, I can't remember the room beyond. It'll be here upstairs, we'll direct you, not a problem. And with that, we're gonna, uh, uh, Announce Kat, Katie Clancy. She's come up from Cape Cod. She's a perennial at boot camp, and we love when you speak. Thank you, Katie Clancy. Thank you, Linda. Hello, Europe. What's happening over here? This is like so far away. It's really awesome to be back here with you guys. I see a lot of familiar faces. I see people I, I haven't met yet, and I hope that you make time to introduce yourself to me, and I will do my best on that name thing. Linda has a lot of good advice. Um, so I'm Katie Clancy, if you don't know that. I am the happiest person in real estate. You didn't know that about me unless you'd looked me up already. Um, and my objective on this planet is to get you to fight me for that title. Right? Why not? Um, so in, in what I'm specifically going to talk about today is burnout. 
And there's so much overlap between what I'm going to talk about and what you've already heard. You're going to hear a few things. I'm going to kind of gloss over a few things that you, you've really dug deep on. And then I'm going to go hard on stuff that um, you maybe haven't seen. Do you need my... Do you need, you're need to do your exercising thing now because we have a little blip. Oh, that's fine. I can start right from the get-go with two slides. I don't care. Um, so um, I, I work on the Cape. And my philosophy is that if you can identify <coughs> the purpose, if you can, every person has a, a, is seeking meaning and purpose. Okay? Um, and if you can figure out what that is in your consumer and fill it, you will make a living. If you can figure out what that is in yourself, you will make a life. And we're a room full of people who have trouble with that. <laughs> Am I really? <laughs> She's like, wow, yeah, don't hold them back. It's true. This is a big issue. Um, so what I'm going to do is walk you through eight principles that I've applied to my business that have brought me from one place to another. And we'll get more specific about that in a minute. So. We all got into real estate. Real estate is an opportunity, is it not? I mean, there truly is no limit to what you can earn. We all know people who are making bank, correct? If not you. But the truth is actually you're not making bank. Statistically, you're making garbage. It's not funny, is it? <laughs> Those first two years when you start in real estate are statistically... Oh. oh. So the first two years in real estate, the median gross income for an agent, is there anybody in here who's in their first two years? Ah, okay, so don't leave the room when I tell you this, is, is under $10,000 per year. You can't live on that. You can't live on that. So you either have to work a second job and then try to build a business that requires your full time to build it, or you've got to have someone else paying your bills which is nice for a little while, gets old when you're 40. You're like, mm, seems like I should be able to handle this at this point. Um, so you think that the established agents have it better? They do not. The median gross income for established, in, established agents is about $43,000 nationwide. That's 20% below the average for the country, for anybody who does anything. Again might not that be that easy to live on it. A lot of people in an industry have to work second jobs their entire careers. Why? You guys, we should be billionaires, and we should be as happy as pigs in poop. Like, I don't get it. Right? We don't because, all right, let me see if I can make this move. I can make it move. All right, so we're just going to make sure you know what's happening. We're going to, I'm giving you the introduction right now. We're going to hit four different, um, and, and you'll, you'll get lots more exposure to these slides and these uh, very specific topics. You've got the opportunity, you need the mindset, and you need the habits. Because the opportunity is nothing until you apply those things. We all want health, wealth, and happiness. It's in our constitution. It's always been a thing, it will always be a thing. This is, you know, you've got, you've got all the opportunity in the world. Here are the sad facts about what you actually do make. And here are the sadder facts about how happy and healthy you actually are. You're a hot mess. As a people, I say you, we. We are, have elevated levels of divorce, substance abuse, depression, suicide. We laugh because otherwise we'd cry. It's kind of a bummer. Add on to that. The external stuff that's going on right now, these are the top eight threats for our industry right now. Like, don't you just want to give up sometime? <laughs> and just say, I'm all done. I can't. <laughs> I quit one time. Man, all right, 10 times. Uh, <laughs> we'll get into more of that. I really did quit. I sucked. Uh, so 10 years ago, I realized that this is maybe not the job for me. I was totally in it for the money. I, to I let people under my skin every day. I wore too many hats, tried to do everything. <laughs> News flash, I'm not that good at everything. I got complacent. Actually, I say complacent, that's a nice way to say it. I was totally paralyzed. I, I, I didn't know what to do. I, had so I have so many problems, I don't know how to fix them, so I'll do nothing. Oops. 
We, um, I got super cynical and snarky. You got a little bitchy. Like, Everybody's a jerk. Uh, I neglected my health. I was fat. Oh, God. Out of shape. I was emotionally drained. I had a million kids. My, oh, my God. It was, well, we'll get into that too. Uh, squander my time. I am distracto robot. Like, I, and so many of us are. And it's actually a gift the ability to focus on so many things. We joke about squirrel and being ADD and all that stuff. It actually is a superpower in a lot of ways, but you got to harness it. Did not harness it. And I really believed that I had to choose between money and happiness. I could not see where they could exist together. It does not have to be this way. I don't know if you can read this. If you follow me on Facebook, I posted this recently. So 10 years ago, I have all these other facts, but we'll get to like the real estate part and the money part. Oh, so I had a kid, and that was my little baby. So when I first started in real estate, I had three kids, and I'd got, just gotten them all in school, which was awesome, because I'm so smart and smug. I kept my day job. I had benefits. My husband's business was doing great. So we're going to start real estate, and I'm just going to crush it. And um, immediately got pregnant <laughs> with that kid. So now I have a newborn going to open houses. I told people I was staging it with grandchildren. It went big second home market. Um, but so I had all these kids in all these different schools, one in nursery school, one in elementary, one in middle, and one in high school, all girls. Let's see with that for a minute. OK. Um, I couldn't afford contact lenses. I, I, I went to the eye doctor, and I'm like, I knew I was kind of low on money. But they're like, uh, no. You, I'm like, all right, fine, I'll get glasses. So I go over to where the frames are like, oh, no, honey, you can't afford those either. And they open this little drawer of like five different choices of these little like wire, I'm wearing them in there. That's what I'm wearing right now. Those are my little poor person glasses. But whatever, try to be cheerful, kind of you know buck up, get through it. Um, my mom bought me my winter coat, which would have been cute if I was four, but I was 40. Um, and uh, my house was in foreclosure. Oh, and my husband's business went under because what led the uh, recession? The housing crash. And we were both in housing. It was, it was pretty bad. In fact, uh, we joke now about it, but my husband and I did the math. We couldn't even afford to get divorced. <laughs> yeah. My dream at that time was to close $5 million in sales. I thought, I, I knew, because I did that math. I'm like, well, if I could close $5 million, I could pay my bills, and we could get cut up, and it'll be OK. And every year, I would try and try and try, and I just couldn't get there. Then. And I'm not going to, it gets worse. It gets really dark and really terrible. I really don't want to bring you down. I just want you to know that if you're in a bad place, if you're in a tough place, you can get out of it. You can get out of it. It's going to start, I'm going to teach you the things to get out of it. But when I was in the pit of the pit of darkness, and I couldn't get out of my own way, I couldn't do anything right, I started to change my mindset. And I'm, we'll get into that. But if you look, this is what my dollar volume was then in 09. I'm shooting 40 million this year, and I'm going to hit it. You guys, like, my goal is $7 million this quarter. And I'm halfway there. Like, pinch, pinch. What? I'm not special. There's nothing special about me. You don't need to be me to do what I did. You've got to be you, every piece of you that you are. We'll come back to that graph. You have the opportunity. And, and you've been, this has been banged into your head for days. You have to take them seriously. You have the opportunity, but if you don't employ the mindset and the habits, you have nada. You have nothing. You have a pretend career you're not taking seriously. So we're going to start with the mindset. So we're going to go through four pieces of uh, sort of four tactics to get your head on straight. It's the fuel for the journey. This was the biggest one. So when I was super sad and couldn't solve any of my own problems, I had this weird like epiphany thing where, well, if I can't solve my problems, maybe I can help somebody else. Maybe I'll just, and I don't even know where this came from. It sounds like very sophisticated and smart. I, I imagine intuition had something to do with it. I was like, I'll just be a blessing to other people. I wasn't blessing anybody at that point. I was grumpy. My gosh. So. I said, well, I'll, I'll just try, try to be nice to other people. And I actually started with my husband, who, believe me, I did not want to, because, of course, he's the source of all the problems. I had nothing to do with it. 
And uh, I, I started to, to like try to help him and like say nice things to him from time to time. And it was kind of funny. He liked it, and he was nice back. We'll get into more of that. Um, but the problem that I think a lot of us run into in this industry is that we are so focused on the pay. And there is nothing wrong with that. You can make bank, and you should. There is no shame in wanting to be rich. So don't make yourself wrong about that. You just got to put it in its right place. There's more to motivation than that, because pay is great. The promise of pay will get you started. It will make you write down a big goal. It will say, make you say, I am door knocking on Saturday. I am totally doing that. If that's all you got, I'm telling you right now, you're not door knocking. Maybe once, maybe two doors. And then you're like, that was terrible. I'm never doing that again. Let's bring the goal down. I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> you need to start. So I want tell me, somebody tell me, everybody I want you to think right now, everybody, you don't need to say it out loud. What would be, what is to you in 2020, a boatload of money, like, like life-changing dollars? That you, the highest number that you can wrap your brain around and then add a little bit more. Write it down. You guys, if you get nothing else out of boot camp, the one thing that you need to take away is freaking do something. Action. So if I tell you to write something down, for the love of God, <laughs> write it down. So did you write the number down? Did it feel a little weird? Like, that's not my number. Who that money, that's not me. Not yet. All right, so you wrote the number down. You lived. The world did not implode. What would it mean to you and your family if you actually hit that number? You've got to go with me here. Take the ride. Take the leap. Take the conceptual leap. What if you actually did that? People have hit that number. The number that you wrote down, humans, mortals, have hit that number in their first year. That can happen. So what would it mean? Jot a couple things down right now. So for me, if I hit my really big number, we might be able to pay off our mortgage, which would be amazeballs. Like pay off, not just pay. Like I used to be excited we could pay it that month. Like pay it off. That'd be crazy. Because if we paid off our mortgage, then maybe we could go buy another house. Wouldn't that be awesome? Maybe you just want to just Send a kid on a trip. Or like for me, I really want to take care of my parents. I want to make sure they stay in their house forever, as long as they want to. So that's your personal goal. All right, so with this purpose thing, oh, what does that mean? I don't know, what's my purpose? Why are you even in this industry? Like, I know a lot of us were like, well, you know, I could do it part time. And then you're like, oh my god, this is anything but part time. But you're still here. And, and a lot of you have done a lot of business. I'd like someone to, to put their hand in the air and tell me about a recent transaction or interaction or something that happened in your work that was like, this is why I do this. Yes. Oh my gosh. So he did. He finally talked to the whole department. Mm -hmm. And she got me pre approved. And this man went to find this dog in this terrible area to own a home in a beautiful area for a family. I got goosebumps. And when he went there and we closed and he did his final walkthrough, I looked at Trevor standing outside his house in the power building. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's. Awesome. Repeat that back a little bit. I'm going to say it back. I know because you didn't have a mic and this is being recorded and now I'm all weepy. Um, what is your name? Kathleen. Kathleen. And what is your name? Kathy 
Kathleen and Kathy. Okay, so Kathleen and Kathy, I'm going to tell the story again because we want, this, is, this is awesome. And I know you're thinking of a story that you have. I, don't, I can't cry again today, so it's very easy to make me do. So, um, so Kathleen had a, a, an online lead, so that's a nobody. They don't know you from Adam. They don't trust you. They don't think any, you are a total commodity. And, it, and trying to convert those leads, by the way, is, that is work. So she, she did that. She gained his trust. A little enough to let him shop with her, and he had one hundred thirty-two thousand dollars cash, and he's like, I just, I just want to, you know, nobody will pre-pre. I'm not looking for a mortgage. It's not going to happen. I just want to buy something for one thirty-two. She found him something, kind of a dumpy little condo, and she's like, You can do better. I know you can do better. Stop me if I'm wrong, okay? You can totally do better. Talk to Kathy, and he's like, mm -mm, Don't want to. Forced her to him to talk to Kathy. Finally, did he gets pre-qualified? He ends up buying a home, a home. And he was so happy. He throws his hands in the air, like in front of the house. And she has a picture at the closing. That's purpose. And you all have a story that's similar. Because you forget sometimes why you do the business, don't you? You can't forget, you guys. This, per this pyramid, you have to start at the bottom. Purpose is so pay will get you started, your personal goals. We'll get you through more stuff. Like, I'm doing it for the kids. Put a little picture of the kids and Disney by the phone. Like, <gasps> okay, I'll make the call. You know, that'll get you through a little bit. But purpose keeps you in the fight for the long run. Don't lose sight of that. Kathy. So, one thing you said he was so excited he is already sending referrals. Okay, so now we got to like all those people like, yeah, but where's the money? There's the money. If you help enough people sol solve their problems, if you help enough people get where they want to go, you're going to get where you want to go. That's the Zig Ziglar quote that was on there before. Answer the question. <laughs> We're moving on to the next topic. If you have, might I suggest you're a jerk. <laughs> Why would you ever look at a baby and say that? Why would I ask that question, right? Well, have you ever looked at anybody and said that? Yes. Because they are, Katie. Well, really? Well, how, how, did, how did they go from that to jerk? And how do you, who are you to say that? And I'm not going to belabor this too much because you guys have talked a lot about um, presuming positive intent and whatnot, but you must see the best in every person. I, I believe that our jobs as realtors and mortgage loan officers are very similar in many ways to the job of an obstetrician. Ladies, sit with that for a minute. Can you see where I'm going? So we get this whole birth situation. They're pregnant. They're like, all right, you're going to have a baby. And I'm going to tell you what it's all about. And they're reading all about, well, I think I know something. Well, I'm sure you do. You don't know nothing about it. And it's incredibly intimate. Like, you need to know things. You need to build trust like an obstetrician builds trust. It's a major transition in their life. It's changing their identity. And there's a lot at stake. So imagine the stress of a woman in labor. Are you going to judge her in that moment? She's kind of a bitch, though. I don't, really, I don't really like her. Really? Legs in stirrup being rended in half? She, do you think she was like maybe not having her best day? It's the same thing with real estate. Did I cross the line, Linda? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, um, it's the same thing in real estate. People are not at their best. These clients are nervous. They're about to do something really big. They're totally exposed. You know all their money. You get an insight to the relationships, don't you? You see some, OK, I'm going to leave you two alone for a minute. Um, it's, it's, a big, it's a big deal. And you can't judge them when they're there. They're, they, they, they don't, they're not at their best. And neither sometimes are your co-brokes. Listen, they're trying to put on a show. They're trying to put a deal together. You don't know if they're struggling to make their mortgage payment. And they're freaking out because they might not make this deal close. So they're under stress, too. You've got to be more compassionate. Our, can everybody actually, can everybody think of one person recently, co-broke or a client or a prospect, who really got under your skin? 
Like if you saw their name on your phone, you'd be like, ah, oh. yeah. Oh, no, yeah, we're not, no, yeah. We're like, boop, boop, yep, reject. All right. So I'm going to give you a challenge. Um, you're going to humanize that person. Can you answer these questions about that person? Ready, set, go. Go find them. Do you know what? Do you know these answers? Do they have a spouse or a partner? Are they a parent? If they're a parent, someone thinks they hung the moon. Someone can't wait to see their stupid face at the end of the day. <laughs> they're like, Mom, moon. You know, like, do they have pets? Like, even if they don't have kids, if they have a pet, they'll. So happy to see them. And you're like, mm, take it. Do you know what they did before realist? Like, these are people. They're just like you. If you can be a little bit more compassionate, not just because it's the right thing to do, but you will notice that if you can be a little more compassionate, a little bit more open to understanding them, you get in a real powerful position. When you're been, when you get snarky, you're in, in a less powerful position. Don't go there. All right, staying with, oh, did you? Okay, go ahead, take a picture. I'll make the slides available. Uh, but if you don't go do this, shame on you. Uh, and again, going to the theme of action. It, there's so much good stuff you're getting at boot camp. It will be a total waste of your time and money if you don't use it. This, and this presentation in particular is full of action. There's millions of things that you can do, easy peasy. And if you're real sly, you could probably do it without me catching you right now. <laughs> so know your gifts and leverage them. Newsflash, you're not good at everything in real estate. In fact, you're particularly awful at at least one thing. For me, that is a number of things. Directions, can I find my way out of a paper bag? I abhor data entry. I love something that's organized. I don't like getting it that way, right? Um, what else do I stink at? I hate doing showings. I hate it. I stopped working with buyers because I'm like, ah, you want to see another house? Fine. <laughs> love listings all about it. So I sub out my buyers to buyer agents on my team who love it. Love being in the car all day long. Oh, I couldn't. Do not want to. But I'm really, really good at other things. And so when I figured that out, and I, actually going back to the, um, that graph right there, so 2015 is where I found out how much I can do without help. It's approximately $11 million before I fall apart. This year I was like, oh apart, dropped a lot of balls, people are mad at me, getting bad reviews, this seems like a bad thing. Started a team, and look what happened. I started to get help. And that doesn't just mean you have to get a team to, uh, to know your strengths. You've done something like this exercise before. Take stock, though. Write down every piece, every role, every task, every part of the business, and you want to rank it. You put right next to the things that you hate or you stink at, Put green next to the things that you're pretty good at and you really enjoy. And these all should be things that lead to making money, obviously. Yellow, you're not really sure. If you got a little better at it, you'd probably enjoy it more. Or like, ah, I could probably sub this one out too. Red, the reds are your first hire, the first person you're going to hire, or the first thing that you're going to delegate. Green is where you should start your days because you're going to get the most bang out of your buck for your time there, and you're more, more likely to stay consistent with it. And I'll make sure Linda has access to my slides, so if you miss one of these, we will, um, you'll have access to it. Do you guys know what uh, this quote is from? Harry when Harry met Sally? The scene, I'm not gonna play it. You play it, play it. It's inappropriate, Linda. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's not, nothing inappropriate here. Well, the, I, the video actually didn't transfer, oh. so I just did a still shot. But um, Meg Ryan, I can't even say it. I'm not saying it. Just Google it, okay? <laughs> it's, it's super fresh and super funny. Anyway, after she puts on her little show, the lady in the next booth goes, I'll have what she's having, <laughs> which is really quite funny. But my point is happiness is a choice. And don't even start with me to tell me that it's not. When I was in the darkest hole of darkest holes, I 
did make one. I did make one choice to try to, you know, cheer up other people and try to, you know, somehow that did something. It took me the tension off of my problems, but also, so I heard somewhere like, oh, gratitude. Blah. So I got a gratitude journal. Like all the stuff I thought was total garbage. By the way, I was so skeptical, but I'm like desperate at this point. So I got a small journal because I didn't have much to be grateful for. <laughs> and on the left side, I would write what I was really grateful for. And on the right side, because there wasn't often that much, on the, left, on the right side, I would write things I wish were true and pretended they were true and said I was grateful for them. I was totally delusional. I told you I was desperate. But I'll tell you what, sometimes in those places is where the good stuff happens. And it was a huge part of my recovery. And before long, that right side stuff started to come true. And in the process of just trying to find something to be grateful for, you're going through your whole day and you're like, you're, you're raking for good. You're like, you're like fishing for good, throw the net out again. And you're going through and it kind of puts you in a little bit of a better frame of mind. And you start feeling better because there's always something to be grateful for. Someone that you know or, or someone, you know, someone out there isn't awake today because they didn't wake up. They had yesterday, they didn't get today. So you got today. Lucky you. All right, moving on to habits. So this is where I'm talking about. You've got the opportunity. You've got the mindset. And the mindset is a practice, too. You've got, you've got to work on it. You've got to really work on the mindset. But it's all just going to sit there if you don't act. So you know, and I, what I mean act, I don't mean like, have a great two weeks after boot camp, like, wow, February really blew up. That was awesome. What happened to March? Because you stopped acting. You have to be relentless in your action. But for someone like me and a lot of you out there, and actually just it's human nature to kind of settle back into what was comfortable. You've got to establish habits. Habits are the best way to do that. So there's going to be four of them. One of them is commit to constantly grow and get better. Like I referenced earlier, I was so overwhelmed, I was just paralyzed. I did, I did nothing. I did a little, a little to do. And then I've had other times in my career where I'm like, this is pretty good. It's good enough. Momentum's a strategy, right? Yes. So I think one thing that I think that most people probably relate to is being like all excited from something they learn from something like this. Oh, sorry. Usually I'm loud enough. <laughs> the mic needs to pick you up for the recording. Um, so usually people are pretty motivated after they go to a thing, but I guess for someone that is maybe not as consistent or um, someone for yourself, like when you're in that dark place, how did you or what motivated you to stay committed and stay on task with I'll your do journey? What, so first of all, I can't bear, uh, and this might be unique to me, I don't think it is, I can't bear victimhood. I would not be defined by what the world did to me. I decided I will be defined by what I do in the world. I will not, nobody, I'm nobody's bitch, okay? Like, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> and neither are you. Like, you don't have to be. Stuff's gonna happen to you. Stuff's gonna happen to me. It still happens to me. But it's, it's all how you, how you respond to it. So that was, my, that was my mindset that I started with that I, you know, please steal it. Um, The bad stuff? Oh, yeah. right, you want to hear the rest of the story? Here we go. So I'll bang through it as fast as I can. Jen, do you want to say something? I just have two questions. Wait, on the gratitude journal, where you can just go ahead and select yourself you're gratitude for, and then someone write that you wish for a certain Can you do an example of that? Yes. OK. So the question was, on the gratitude journal, on the left side, I would write, I was truly grateful for these things that were actually true. On the right side, I would write about things that I, I wished I could be grateful for, but they weren't true. So I would say, I am so grateful that Mark and I are totally on the same page about parenting. I am so grateful that all my bills are pay, <coughs> paid. I, I'm, I'm so grateful that you know, I'm super fit and healthy. Okay. None of that was true. But I just put my brain there for giggles. All right, so you want to hear the rest of it? Fine. So I've got, <laughs> I've, what have I got? I've got four kids now. And um, we went, our, so our house was in foreclosure, we're fighting, and couldn't get divorced, la la la. I got pregnant again. 
I don't really know how, quite honestly. Uh, put that out there. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> what? I was blessed. Yes. So we were like, okay, let's do this. Like, let's go. I don't know where we're gonna live, but let's make another human. All right. So we waited and waited to tell anybody because we were also a little bit ashamed of ourselves. Like, you know how this happens. Our parents were already helping us out financially. Like, it was just mortifying to be like, hey, mom, guess what? And so we told everybody finally at Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, whatever, like two weeks later, so we're, we're like trying to get ready for Christmas with $12, three, four kids. I don't know how that's going to happen. And of course, we're not talking, so we can't strategize around it. And we find out that the baby's really sick. And that pregnancy did not finish. And that happened right around the 17th, 18th of December. And that was bad. And I wanted to give up on everything. That's the dark place. So, moving on. I don't want to dwell on that. I guess it's, I, it's, it is important to know, and it is relatable if you're, in a, if you're like, well, you can't beat my story. I don't want to play that game with anybody. I really don't. You all have something. Everybody in this room has something that would bring me to my knees. But I want you to know, don't sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Suck it up, buttercup, okay? You can get better. You can. If I did, I had every reason to be like, I am out. See ya. Goodbye. But I didn't. One of the things that I did do that, you know, I talk about getting into action, talk about being complacent or paralyzed and how hard that was. If you're in that place right now, what I might suggest to you, if you're like, no, I, can't, I still, I can't. I can't do anything. All I can do is be in this place right now. Great. Meditate. Put your shoulders back, breathe, close your eyes, give it 30 seconds and just count your breaths. Just be, that's a verb, you're doing, that's action. Has anybody here ever meditated? Raise your hand if you've ever meditated in your whole wide life. Okay, great. It's not that hard, right? Just shut up for a little while <laughs> and count your breaths. It's very easy. Not complicated. Oh, you threw me off, Kathy. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Oh, game face. All right. So, yes, the more you learn, the more you earn. Come on, commit to constantly grow and get better. I want you to pick one from each of these lists. You cannot sit there and do nothing. You're not good enough. <laughs> That's the opposite message than what you've been getting, right? You're not. You can't imagine that you've learned everything there is to learn that your skills are as sharp as they can be, that the industry is not going to continue evolve no matter, to evolve no matter what you're doing. I'm going to give you links to these too, but, and, and actually links to where you can actually buy them. Um, but you, you, it is very Darwinian, this industry. If you don't evolve, you will die. You will be irrelevant. You will make no more money. But if you keep evolving and stay sharp, and I don't care, don't, I don't want, don't play the age card on me. I don't want to hear it. Don't, it, the high age or the low age. It, it's, it's baloney. There's, there's every person in this room, regardless of circumstance, has the ability to crush it in this industry. So these are some of my favorite books here, some of my favorite podcasts. That one in the middle, oh my God, who does that one? Oh my God, it's me. <laughs> oh, that was my goal this year. I was going to start a podcast. I did. So we've got one episode up. We do one a week. Um, and you want to hit a conference every year, and so far so good, you've nailed that one. So check that box. But I would encourage you to get out to some others. Some of them cost a lot of money, and you have to wait a while till you can afford to get them. Or maybe you have the dollars, and you're like, this is the year. I'm going to Inman. But like G-Bar, was anybody at G-Bar last, this last one? So G-Bar is the Greater Boston Association of Realtors, of which you should be a member. Are you not? Yes. You all, oh, okay. If you are a member, and I'm not, I go anyway. I'm on the Cape. I don't need to be a member of G-Bar. Um, love that conference. They always have good names. 
Um, the Boom Team, actually, they were on the stage. Their podcast is one of the best. The Boom Team, they're hilarious. And they're go-getters, very relatable. Um, and they, they, they just do a great job. So pick at least one. So this is part of the action. You don't have to spend a dime. You've already done the boot camp piece. You can subscribe to a podcast for free. And if you have Audible, it'll cost you a total of $15 to get one book a month. You can do that, right? You can do that. Um, all right. Use your body. Now, there's lots of research. This was one of the things that I learned, too. So when I was, it was, remember I told you I was a little chubby? So when I finally had a few dollars to rub together, at this point, dollars, not just dimes, I said, I got to get a gym membership. I got to do something. Because I was running, but boy, you can get, you can stay pretty fat while you're running, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I apparently wasn't running that far. I don't know what it was. Um, so I said, I'm going to try CrossFit <laughs> because I don't have time for these like do it slow kind of things. So I, I went to the CrossFit gym and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I looked at their schedule and the only class that I could go to because of my schedule was 5.30 in the ever loving morning. Like, are you kidding me? But I was like, whatever, I told people I was going to do it, I'll do it for three days. I'm like, that's it, I'll try it for three days. Because I also went up to the coach, I was like, here's the thing. I quit stuff, and I know that I quit it in threes. So if you see me on day four, I'd like a little uh, you know, high five. If you see me on week four, little party, and month four, my god, you should sell me the place. <laughs> I'm eight years into it, you guys. I can't even believe it. Like, but, here, but this is what I got from it. I realized that there's so much more to it than getting in shape. Like, my body's fine, whatever. I weighed the same height the day after I had my baby. I don't care. I feel like a million bucks. But I also got some other benefits from it. Schedules and goals. So I'm now a morning person. Like, legit. <laughs> Linda texted me yesterday morning. Oh, my God, I need your slides. I'm so sorry to be texting you so early. It was like 5.15. I sent her a picture back from the gym. Like, booyah. Like, <laughs> love doing that. Um, cause also you walk around all day and I'm like, do you work out? Well, I did. Of course, <laughs> of course I haven't yet today. I have to go back and sit. Isn't it the worst when you're trying to work out in the afternoon? I'm like, I'm going to come on. You can do it. You can do it. Like there's a hundred different things that get in your way. You got to do it in the morning. Um, it builds your brain. It helps you break bad habits. hundred percent true. I'll add a couple of other things. So staying competitive with yourself and with others, there's nothing wrong with being competitive. Winning feels good. You should be out there winning for your clients all the time. How many people here were on uh, a sports team ever? Yeah. Do you see the parallels? And those of you who haven't been on a sports team, if you do any sort of sport or like running or anything like that, you got the same thing going on. And I highly encourage you to try it if you're not doing something right now. Um, because you're also around people who are also taking care of themselves. It turns out the people at my gym are all like, achievers in their own fields. We've got doctors and lawyers and, and PTs and like all sorts of, we've got a vet in there and they're all kind of the best that they can be. They're all working to better themselves. What great mojo to be around. Um, and it definitely builds self-esteem for a healthier you inside and out and you'll work smarter and not harder. Um, I, think, I think one of my favorite things though is that environment, the people that you're around. I've got, you know, People who don't put up with my excuses, I love it. And it feels like a team, too. I love that part of it. Wait a minute. Everybody get up. Stand up. All right, nobody here wants to get old, like, like old in the negative way, right? I want to get old in the real way, like live a long, long time. And the study that says if you can get up and get down from your chair without touching it, what does it say, Linda? You're not going to get old? <laughs> Is that right? You'll keep your balance. You won't fall. You know. Ladies with the heels on, you get extra points for doing this. <laughs> touch your butt to your chair, but don't sit. Just touch your butt. Don't sit down! <laughs> get up. Oh, hands in the pockets. I like it. OK, all right. Don't touch anything. Down again. Touch your butt to the chair. Do not sit. Up, down. 
Up. Take one foot off the ground. Touch your butt with heels. Oh, that was hard. Back up. Other foot. I can't do the other foot as well. And good job. Both hands up in the air. How often do you do this? Not often enough. We spend so much time sitting. Our bodies, we don't even know how to squat anymore. OK, hands down. All right, shake out your legs. All right, you worked out. Everybody gets credit for a workout. Yeah. And we did it together. And you can do it. So again, I don't want to hear anything. Well, I can't do that. What about bad knees? Really? How did you get here? I didn't see you come in on a wheelchair. And if you did, OK, we're going with the arms. Again, be nobody's bitch. <laughs> Practicing your art can help your career. Oh, we'll go back to that. So you can't be on all the time. You are on a lot of the time, right? You're, you're presenting a property in its best light. You're presenting yourself always. You, you're trying to make an impression. People are judging you, which is hard and anxiety producing. But it's true. It's the nature of our business. So you're on all the time. And you don't really get to let your guard down. That is exhausting. We come home at the end of the day tired, not because we moved our bodies. We've already been over that. We sit on our butts most of the time, whether it's at a desk or behind a wheel. So we're not getting a lot of exercise. That's not what's making us tired. We're exhausted emotionally and psychically because we've been on. You have to be off sometimes. Off with a capital O, which means you've got to find, now I say art. You can paint if you want, but you can also, that, that this might overlap with your sport too. Where do you lose yourself? Somebody tell me, did I hear cooking? Cooking, OK, give me another one. Golf, yes. Then you are dead serious about that. The look on your face, you're like, golf, and I will kill you at it. <laughs> I, got, I got it. I'm not going there. <laughs> what else? Dancing. Dancing, yeah. yes. Sewing. Wait, wait, what? Sewing. Sewing? What else did I hear? Live music, repurposing furniture. Who knew? Did you know this about your friends? Probably not. What else? Scuba diving. Crafting, right? Don't you like it just spread crap all over the table? And this gets me over here, and I'm going to cut a little piece of that, and I'm going to really lose yourself in that. What do you nerd out about? Come on. N nerd out. What do you get? Like, oh my God, you want to talk about CrossFit or whatever? You know, like, what gets you? Like, let's be honest. Are you in a forum for something we don't know about? I bet you are. All right, you've got to go there. You have got to go there and just let go. It, it could be Sudoku. One of the agents on my team, she gets super nerdy about analysis. So, so she has to draw a lot. She's like, I actually love doing like CMAs. You know, she's like, and I look at it 10 different ways, and I have all these different models. And I'm like, OK. That's why she's on my team, because that is not my cup of tea. But she actually can go way too far and waste a lot of time doing that. And you have to be careful. That thing that you get lost in, you get lost in. So you've got to put walls around the time, but you have to make sure you're doing it. So she will analyze stuff for sport. God love her. Five you minutes, don't. Katie. Five minutes, Katie? Five minutes. Oh, rats. All right. So if you don't know what your art is, I want you to think about what you had fun doing when you were a kid. You got to do it again. What were you good at? Did you used to sing, play piano? Go get a piano. God knows everybody's trying to give them away, right? Ever try to get rid of a piano in a house? You know what I'm talking about. All right. Oh, this is the biggest one. Own your time. So we have five minutes to tell you how to own your time. Here we go. A little structure goes a long way. These are my four big, and they're big, big ideas about uh, managing your time. The first one is rituals. Second is ideal week. You're going to give each day a theme. Power blocks, you reserve 9 to 12, which is your most productive time, or productive work. Buffer zones at the start of each power block. This is when you're going to do all the stuff that the, the attend to all the stuff that tends to distract you. All right, we're going to, I'm going to go through each four of these. And um, these are my rituals. Rituals are the things that start and end your days at home and at work. I think one of the best, my favorite ritual, and I think the most important one, if you're going to start with a ritual, would be the before bed routine. Because it gets you ready so you wake up and you're like, nothing's getting in my way. 
reduces all the friction getting out the door. So, like, I, I, I do go to the gym at 5.30 in the morning, but it doesn't take much to make me not go. <laughs> oh, I can't find my shoes. Going back to bed. You know? <laughs> like, but no, like, last night me was like, girl, you're going, and put my stuff out. So morning me is like, oh, I hate you. Oh, put my feet in my shoes, and out I go. And I'm there. This is what sets you up for success. You'll have a different, your, your routines will be different. Write this down, it's not on the slide. This is for house stuff. I can't clean a house to save my life. Flylady.net. Uh, again, on the theme of divorce, which we never did get. And I'm super happy with this guy. He's amazeballs. He's like, he's so awesome. Like, I, I'm so glad we didn't go down that road. We, I, I got it real good. But my, <laughs> my, I, uh, but I had a little trouble cleaning houses, and he licks things really clean, and I don't give a crap. So, um, and I was the one who had the time at the time. Flylady.net uh, is just like you and me, can't figure stuff out, gave me the routines. That shine your sink comes from her. If I can shine the kitchen sink, chances are the rest of the kitchen's going to end up pretty okay. And at least when I go down in the morning, that's done. It's the same thing with like the making your bed. You make your bed in the morning, so morning you makes the bed. So afternoon you's like, oh, that was so nice, thank you. You know, like if everything else goes wrong, at least you're going home. Someone did something nice for you. And you can make all of your, and the big three stuff comes from, um, it's going to be very ironic when I think of it, free to focus. Take that where you will. Okay, ideal week from free to focus, which is one of the books that I'm going to show you. This is ideal, emphasis on ideal week. It's just like when you say the speed limit's 55. Ideally, you're going to go 55. You generally don't. Um, so this is, so you give each day a theme. I don't know if you can see the themes on Monday. My theme is um, fresh start, you know, finish and start the things from the weekend in client care. All my clients get a call on Monday. Uh, Tuesday is prospecting and leads. Wednesday is marketing and content. Thursday is database. Who spends any time on your database? It is your gold mine. Please dedicate a day to it. And Friday is, um, uh, Friday is uh, operations. So um, we're looking at new technology, trying to figure out systems, blah, 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 that's what I do, that stuff. And I don't schedule appointments in the morning if I can at all help it. So when the doctor's like, what's better for you, morning or afternoon? What is it? Thank you. Your appointments should always be in the afternoon, even your showings. If you can make it in the afternoon, do it. Because if you can be uninterrupted, it takes you 25 minutes to get back to focus. And that's on a good day when you get interrupted. You're not going to answer phone calls. You're not going to answer texts. You're not going to answer emails during those power blocks because you have time to do them during the buffer zones. And that's these. You're going to have one in the morning, right before you start work, one right after lunch, one uh, at the end of your work day, and then I build one in also at the end of the night. I don't make phone calls late. I don't want to get one. I don't give one. So you can, ideal. This is ideal. You're going to break from this sometimes out of necessity, but really try to honor this. You would be amazed how productive you can be and steal mercilessly. If my schedule works for you, God bless you, take it. All right, the, like I said, the slides will be available and I'm gonna give you another thing on the resources, but these are, so there's the four mindsets, the four habits, there's no excuse. You have the opportunity, you have got unbelievable support. If you're working for Leading Edge, I am very jealous, you have resources in people and in technology that other people don't. And if you're not using them, start. That should be your 2020 goal. Get what you're paying for. I hate when people are like, can't believe I have to pay this marketing fee. Really? Do you know what you get for that? Go get it. I do the same thing with taxes. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna call the cops for kicks. <laughs> 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 don't really do that. But like, you know, if there's, if there's something that I'm paying for, I'm like, I wanna see what the benefit is. How can I maximize it? Get my money's worth. And so here are some resources. I would love it if you would follow me. So my, the, my Katie Clancy stuff is on Hell Yeah Bacon. I was going to change it, but I love it. Hell Yeah Bacon, why not? I love bacon. Um, and my business stuff is on the Capos. My, um, the, the materials that you see, my blog, all, a lot of the stuff that I talked about today, I expand on in the blog and in the podcast. So you can kind of dig a little deeper with me on that. Um, and the Make Me Better, the podcast conferences and books are all at that blog post up there. And you can click right on and register or get more information about any of them right there. Will you reach out to me? Will you connect with me? 
I would really, really like that. Because you guys are different from other agents. You did it already? Oh, a little, yes. Oh, the toilet choke. Oh, God, yeah. That was bad. Yeah, we talked about failure last. If anyone wants to hear about the toilet story, I'll tell you later. Um, all right, that's it, you guys. Thank you so much. I am so grateful <laughs> to be here. Thanks, Linda. Katie, as always, delivers. I thank Marilyn Ellis for this. I think this is a fabulous way to end today. The man on top of the mountain didn't fall there. And with that, I'll see you on Friday. I can't wait to hear your yes. boot camp homework. And keep up all the good work, guys. Have a good day.